Welcome everybody to another video on the Southwest Florida Technet YouTube channel. Today we're going to be reviewing this here Motorola XPR 7550E on the very messy ham radio workbench. So I purchased this radio about a month ago at the Huntsville Ham Fest and before I purchased it I had been researching this radio a fair bit. I had discovered this radio a while back and I really loved the form factor and the look and feel of it and the most important part which was the performance of the radio. So when I found it at HamFest I couldn't let that opportunity pass up and I purchased the VHF version. So we're going to talk about the pros and we're going to talk about the cons of using this radio for amateur purposes because it is a commercial radio. So the first thing I'm going to do is probably kind of backwards but we're going to start with the cons of using this for a ham radio. So the main con, of course, is that there's no VFO. You cannot enter in a frequency and tune it on the fly. It does have a function where you can program the radio, and you're supposed to be able to edit channels with it. And here you can see, like, if I try and edit this APRS channel, we can edit the channel name, the admit criteria, the timeout timer, and we can copy it. There is no frequency edit option, and that's actually a limitation of this version of firmware. So the firmware version we have on this radio is version 2.09. Now, if you go above this version, the radio will no longer work with all the hacks and bypasses that you have to use in order to use this for ham radio without paying, you know, multiple thousand dollars to unlock all the features you want. So you're stuck with the old firmware, and you cannot directly enter in any frequencies. Now, this is not such a big problem if you just carry this every single day with you and you already know where you're going to be and you already know where all the repeaters are and you know where you're going to travel. You can program it in ahead of time and that's fine. But if you do get caught in a situation where you need to program something in, you're going to need a laptop with you with the programming cable. But there's no way around it. So that's the main drawback. The other significant drawback is the programming software itself. So if you want to program this thing, you need the official Motorola CPS. Now Motorola does not just give this out to anybody. You have to be a dealer in order to get it through the official channels. In doing so, you have to pass an exam, pay a large fee, and you have to purchase the software. So that is not really something that your average amateur is going to want to do, and it's not something that I wanted to do. Now, if you know where to look, and this includes places like prepper forums, uh, radio modification forums, then you may be able to find somebody who is going to give you the, fir the programming software for this. In which case, you'll have it and you'll be good to go. Otherwise, you can buy it for uh, maybe 100, 200 bucks online, but that's still not the official way you're supposed to get it. So, depending on how comfortable you are with pirating and going through back channels, uh, it's an easy task or a difficult task to get the, the programming software. But the other con is that the accessory port is not a standard TRRS 3.5 millimeter audio jack. It is the proprietary Motorola connector style for the XPR series of radios. This is not generally a problem because I don't use a lot of accessories, but if you're someone who likes to swap out accessories a lot, it can get a little tedious. You have to undo the screw every time. You do have to keep the dust cover on. And whatever accessories you get, you can get unofficial accessories that work. But if you want the Motorola quality stuff, it's going to cost you. Another con is that this is a mono band radio. So there's no dual band version of this radio. You either buy UHF or VHF. I have the VHF model because everything in my area is on VHF. All the amateur radio repeaters are VHF. But that does mean I cannot program in stuff like the commercial band frequencies in here because can only do VHF. And the last and final major drawback is the antenna connector. If you want to put this thing on an external antenna, you're going to have to buy a third-party adapter that will convert this into SMA. They do make the connectors on eBay. They are a little bit overpriced, but they do work. Now let's move on to the things that I like about this radio, and there are a lot of them. Now before I say anything, I will admit that I have not used this on digital yet. There are no VHF digital repeaters in the area. So everything I have done so far has been on analog. So the number one thing that everybody probably wants to know is how does the audio sound? Well, it is really, really good. The output speaker on this, even when cranked up to maximum volume, does not really distort like a cheaper handheld will. So you can have this thing blasting loud audio and it will sound the same as if it were at low volume. There's no crackling, there's no overmodulation. It sounds really good at max volume. 
The other thing that is so great about this radio is the microphone. Now, most handhelds, especially Baofengs, require you to be right up on the microphone to talk. Like, you have to have your mouth an inch or less from the microphone to get good, clear audio. Not the case with this radio. If the camera is you looking down, you can hold the radio even this far away or even further and still have loud, clear audio going out on your signal. The radio also has a built-in automatic microphone gain function, which will adjust the gain automatically depending on how close or how far away your voice is. You can also adjust the baseline gain setting in the CPS. And what this means is, when you're out walking down the street and you have your handheld, you don't have to have it right up on you. You can hold it in your hand a foot or more away from your face and still have clear audio. And I really, really love that because when you're take, talking on a, if you're having a long conversation with somebody, it gets really annoying having this radio like right up in your face. You have the antenna right beside your head. You know, all that energy is right there. And I'm not one to say that RF is harmful for you, but it's still having the antenna a little bit further away from your head is probably not a bad thing. And to show this, I'm actually going to do an audio test here on the calling frequency. So here I have a Kenwood TR2600. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to hold the radio at different positions and you're going to hear how the audio sounds. This is K4OBZ holding the radio about 7 to 8 inches away from my face. This is KM4OBZ holding the radio about 4 inches from my face. This is KM4OVZ holding the radio about 12 inches away from my face. And so as you could hear in that test there, the audio sounds great even when you're close up or far away on it, which is really, really nice. Now let's do a receive audio test. I am going to take the Kenwood here outside and we're going to see how it receives audio. This is KM4OVZ doing a receive audio test of the Motorola XPR 7550E. VHF model. I am transmitting with a Kenwood TR2600A handheld transmitter. This radio can receive weak signals indoors and in noisy environments and still give you a good clean copy. And as you can see, the audio sounds just really good. Now with the most important part out of the way, let's talk about form factor. This radio is considerably heavier than something like a Baofeng or a Yesu. It even weighs more than the Yesu FT60, which is one of the heaviest handhelds there is. It is slightly heavier than the FT60. That being said, it does fit in your hand really, really nice. You get a really good grip on it. It feels really, really sturdy. This is a commercial grade radio after all, so it is designed to be beat up. You have a volume knob on the top, which lets you adjust volume and power off the radio. You have your channel selection knob. When you turn it, clicks to the next channel. It's pretty much the same as an up and down button, but it's a knob. The push to talk on this radio is the best that I've ever seen. Most radios have some kind of rubber, squishy push to talk button, like a Baofeng, for example. It's squishy, and you can hear the squishy in the transmission. With the Motorola, it is a single click. I have never once accidentally unkeyed during a transmission, which I used to do with some of the other radios I used. You have plenty of multifunction buttons, so you have the P1 and P2 buttons, which I have programmed to be TX power level and scan mode. On the side here, I have this button programmed for my zone selection, and the button with the dot on it I have is the open squelch button. There's also a button up here and a button right there which I haven't programmed yet. Now let's talk about scanning. When you put this into scan mode, it scans everything but it doesn't really give you much indication on the screen aside from this little zigzag arrow. It actually scans through all 16 of these channels in under a second according to my estimations, which is a really nice feature to have when you're trying to listen to a conversation but don't want to turn it off scan mode. If I switch it over here to channel 1 and I transmit on the handheld, you can see that was probably about a second if I had to guess. So it does really, really well with that. The menu system is really easy to use. Even though there isn't much to do in the menu system as an amateur, it is still really nice to be able to navigate everything with a color screen that has a lot of pixels on it instead of having to read abbreviated words and strangely named menu entries, which is pretty common on a lot of handhelds. This radio can store a lot of channels. I believe it can store a thousand channels 
and you can program in up to I want to say 15 zones which is really really cool considering that my last handheld only stored 250 channels and had 10 banks. The construction of the radio is really solid, it feels really good. The belt clip is mostly metal, which is really nice. It's a very solid belt clip. You can't even bend it with your fingers. It hangs onto my pants just fine. Uh, no complaints there. I have the extended capacity battery. Another nice thing about this radio is you can buy a slim battery, which is not as wide as this battery. And you can buy, I think, three different levels of battery size to fit your needs. So I came, my radio came with the extended battery and I like it a lot. And another feature which I couldn't not mention is the really cool little chirp noise that it makes when you key up. I've always loved that little Motorola noise for some reason and the radio will let you do it even on analog. Battery life on this thing with the extended battery is amazing. I accidentally left it in the work van overnight one day and I was able to use this radio for two straight days without charging it. Anyway, I hope this review was good. Uh, I know there's some other reviews of this radio on YouTube, but not very many that cover spe specifically the analog functions of this radio. I have not really used this on digital at all, and I don't have a whole big desire to just because I don't really like DMR that much. But whenever I get the chance, I will try it out, and I might make an updated review once I do that. If you're looking for a daily driver radio that you can put on your belt and leave there all day and know that it's going to work and it's going to sound good and it's going to look good... The Motorola XPR 7550E, you really just can't go wrong with it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!